Right, today we're going to work on this thing. Well, at least have a look at it. It might even work, I don't know. But it's a HP 3500A IMS volt meter. So I've worked on this previously, and there's one I did the retrofitting of that circuit board I designed in it. So I put that um, chopper board, which I designed, into that unit because the original one was bad, and got that working. And those chopper boards are available to download and get them made from PCBWay or whatever. So that's all available. There's a project on PCBWay site for that. We'll look those up. This one's a much later version. So that one I had before was a 1965 model. This one's a 1982. So it's somewhat different. Now this actually might have the modern version of that circuit board which I designed, with a bit of luck anyway. First thing is, this is in this really weird case. I've never seen one of these cases before. So this case has actually got a model number on it. It's an HP 11076A instrument case. And you can see the actual original casing is in there. It's just slotted in. It's a bit unfortunate it's broken. I've never seen one of these cases before. It's really unusual. I even did a bit of a search online trying to find it and see if I could find this case. Couldn't find it. It was really weird. It's like, there's just no information about them that I could find. Anyway, so we're going to start off with taking out the case, have a better look at it. We'll power it up and actually have a test out and see if it actually works. If it works, it's going to be a little interesting video about this particular case and this unit and just a bit of a look at it. If it doesn't work properly, then it's going to be a repair. Don't know yet. So there's some bits here which I think are locking tabs. So it seems to move. I'm guessing it does something to let it to come out, does it? Maybe. There we go. Oh yeah, yep, so that just tucks in behind. Right, today we're going to work on this thing. Well, at least have a look at it. It may, not, I don't, it may even work, I don't know. But it's a HP 3500A IMS volt meter. So I've worked on one of these previously. And there's one I did the retrofitting of that circuit board I designed in it. So I put that um, chopper board which I designed into that unit because the original one was bad and got that working and those chopper boards are available to download and get them made from PCBWay or whatever so that's all available as a project on PCBWay site for that we'll look those up and this one's a much later version so that one I had before was a 1965 model this one's a 1982 so it's somewhat different now this actually might have the modern version of that circuit board which I designed <coughs> with a bit of luck anyway so, first thing is, this is in this really weird case. I've never seen one of these cases before. So, this case has actually got a model number on it. It's an HP 11076A instrument case. And you can see the actual original casing is in there. It's just slotted in. And it's, it's a bit unfortunate it's broken. But I've never seen one of these cases before. It's really unusual. I even did a, a bit of a search online trying to find it and see if I could find this case. Couldn't find it. It was really weird. It's like, there's just no information about them that I could find. Anyway, so we're going to start off with taking out the case, have a better look at it. And we'll power it up and actually have a test out and see if it actually works. If it works, this is going to be an inter interesting little video about... Um, if it works, it's going to be a little interesting video about this particular case and this unit and just a bit of a look at it. If it doesn't work properly, then it's going to be a repair. Don't know yet. So there's some bits here which I think are locking tabs, because they seem to move. I'm guessing it does something to allow it to come out, does it? Maybe. There we go. Oh yeah, yep, so that just tucks in behind. That's how that goes. When I actually purchased this thing, it didn't actually show the case. It just showed this outside of the case, like a normal unit would be. The case was a surprise. Now I've got to try and get it out. It doesn't want to slide out. I think it's stuck just here. Let's turn up and down, or sideways or something. It's a shame it's broken at the back here. It's a, it's a real shame it's got that, but uh, what is holding this in? Right, got out of the case. It was just stuck on the bottom piece. Once it got a spudger in there and gave it a bit of a push, it actually just popped straight out. It was fine. So it was no particularly complicated thing. So this has been from Babcock's as well, local. It's got, it's got the seals on it still. Now, do I open up and have a look? A set of 230 volts. This has been used locally. I should probably just pop the cover off and have a quick look. I mean, the seals are off anyway, so there's no real loss there, is there? Just have a little peek inside, make sure there's nothing horrendous. And I find half the boards are missing or something. It can happen. <laughs> Shouldn't joke about it. Right, power supply board, looking alright. It's got a more modern transformer in there. And it's got the new version of the board, which is what my board is based on. Nice. So looking nice and clean. Cool. 
So that looks absolutely fine inside there. It's interesting the way the digital board looks newer than the power supply board because it's got newer style caps on it and the power supply has got some older ones. These are the older style, like Sprague's. It's interesting. So it's a newer version of power supply board, newer transformer version and the chopper board is the newer version as well. That's everything I was expecting basically and it looks pristine inside there. Very nice. There's nothing to be concerned about, so I should just power this thing up and actually uh, see what's going on with it. I bet it works. So let's try powering this thing up. It is set to 240 volt, I already checked that. I'm going to leave the top cover off for now in case it smokes. I've got the cable here running off to my Siglent STG2042X, which is set to generate a 1 kHz 1 volt RMS voltage. So this should be full scale, should be one full scale on the 1 volt range. So let's turn the power on over here. We should be able to see the wattage. All right, so it should be able to see the wattage stuff over here, see how it looks like it's powering up. So right now, we'll leave that off. We'll turn it on, should be no power draw. There is nothing. We'll turn this on. Got it set to high range so it won't flick over too much. That's drawing about nine watts, eight and a half watts. Around there. So I'm gonna watch and see what it actually does. I think this may still have a new Vista in it, I'm not sure if it's still got that in there or it's got a different system, which is like a little valve which has to warm up. So it's stabilising, about 8.5 watts, it seems to be settling down now. I'm guessing it's a bit of capacitor reformation going on. Okay, that's all stabilised. So we'll drop this down to say the 3 volt RMS setting, and I'll inject what should be 1 volt RMS, which means you should get a reading of about here. And we do. Look at that. All right, so it's settled down. But it's really slightly high. Okay, so let's do one volt, but it should be full scale. And it's just over very slightly. So does this need calibrating? Possibly. I might do some more verification using different generators and, and measurements and stuff like that to actually see what we're getting. So what we probably could do is tee this off and hook it up to a multimeter at the same time. So we'll do that. And then we'll look at a digital multimeter versus this thing and we'll see what we get. Right, so I've hooked up the uh, Fluke 289 set to AC volt range. As you can see it's tapping off just here, straight onto the front of this meter. So that it's actually data chain, which isn't ideal really. I should be tapping off directly from the front of the generator, be completely equivalent, but this is going to be close enough for our purposes. And you can see that we've got more than one volt on here and bouncing slightly and basically almost exactly one volt there. This is actually reading very slightly high so what's that uh, about 1.08 or something? This does need calibrating. I'm actually surprised it needs calibrating to be honest since it came from bad cops. It's working so that's the best bit I think. So let's try some lower levels and some higher levels and we'll see what we're getting for accuracy there. So I've got that set now to 2 volts RMS as you can see on here and we're getting more than 2 volts and the 3 volts RMS getting very slightly below it there and that's over full scale there My angles are slightly off for the camera that's way over let's do the 10 volt range so don't forget 3 volts so in the 10 volt range you should be over here on that mark right there and we are sitting slightly higher, it's going to give some time to settle down it does have a little bit of settling time yeah it looks like that's it, that's it so let's go up to say 5 yeah that's over half scale and the highest I'm going this generator is 7 volts. So that's maxed out there. But you can see here it's over reading. The maximum full scale on this is wrong. Now, what I didn't check for was the zeroing. I should make sure it's got mechanical zero. I didn't check for that before I started. I should have done. So let's turn the power off. Mechanical zero looks basically bang on. So it's not that. But there is a full scale adjustment for the meter right there. But I might find if I just tweak that full scale adjustment. That might be all it needs without touching anything else because I believe there's actually a wire round part so I'll show you where it is actually and not get tangled up so right there is that one adjustment there now in the older version when I've done a video on about already there's four adjustments in here is it four or three I can't remember now and they got moved onto this board here with the newer version of the board but that adjustment there is for the meter so I think the meter just needs adjusting so we'll give that a bit of a tweak and we'll see if that comes right so what I'll do is I'll set this at 1 volt RMS, I'll do full scale 1 volt, 
and set that up there. But this is the wire round adjustment and it could just be it needs a bit of a clean up and a bit of a tweak. No, nope, it's actually going even minimum setting is off scale so it's not just that. And you just see it jumping around a bit then because it was a bit dirty but now I've just zoomed it around a little bit let's do that range there so that's fully one way let it settle down and fully the other way is too high so even at its minimum setting it's too high something else needs adjusting so it's not just that which is a shame because that would have been a nice easy fix so let's go down to a lower level let's do say 300 millivolts one volt range and that's say reading above that should be full scale and it kind of is it's getting there and the actual reading 297 so 100 millivolts should be full scale on there basically come on settle down the switch might need cleaning yeah look at that that's settled it down the switch needs cleaning and reading slightly low so it's interesting so the lower ranges are reading differently to the higher ranges Interesting thing to note. So I'll do 50, it's a bit half scale, 30, just see it slightly low like it was on a full scale, 30 over here. So what I might actually do is tweak this back up so these lower ranges are correct. And I'll start to look at the higher range. You know, about there. So let's go back up to 100 again. Yep, it's looking right there. So it looks like the lower range is actually okay there with that adjustment, but the higher range is wrong. So down to 10 millivolts. That's looking right there. Looking okay there. So yeah, it does look like it's basically working. I just need to tweak the adjustments a little bit. Let's do one millivolt. It did show one. Point through scale, showing one. One millivolt, full scale. Is there. So all those all those ranges from here down at least are definitely working. So it looks like it's functional. But I'm going to need to look at what's required to uh, get these upper ranges working properly. Yeah, just that slight offset there, which is interesting. Right, it's quite a long time after the last piece of video I recorded. It's been sitting here for a while from it, waiting for me to get around to finishing it off. So I pulled it apart now, and I had issues with the switch being a little bit dirty, so I've put some of this deoxid gold on the switch just to clean the switch up a little bit, worked it a bit. And this is still an older version, I suppose, with the new Vista set up in it. I thought that might be gone by now, but no, it's definitely still in this one. What year was this one again? I've forgotten. 82, 1982. So in the 1984 version, that's no longer present. So this is right at the end of the life of the new Vista section. I'm going to go around and check capacitors. In the previous one of these I did, I completely recapped the whole thing. But that was 20 years older than this one. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to go around and check capacitors. I'm going to do it on camera, I'm just going to check them and see how they come out. I mean, this is all gold plated boards as well. This is all gold plated, it's really nice. Um, but one thing I've noticed is that on the um, previous one I did, all the foam was disintegrated and basically it just fell and turned into dust. This foam is starting to go. Right, if I squash that, it stays squashed. All right, so we've got this foam there, get that poke, it stays like it, pretty much. So this foam is right on the end of its life as well. So I'm going to take this foam out and do this. Now, the other thing I notice is that this ball is sitting on the plastic. It's not actually surrounded by foam. The foam is there to try and protect the new Vista. I'm going to take this foam out and replace it as well. But I'll check on the capacitors first because I need to take that board out anyway to replace caps. Um, it's possible I do. I don't know. They might be fine still. I mean these are only 40 years old. <laughs> they might be fine. We shall see. I'll check them out and I'll see it. If, they, if the caps look fine I won't bother replacing them in this one. This unit's in really good condition. I don't think it's actually had much use to be honest. Then once I've done that, I'll look at recalibrating it. I mean, I've also got the power supply caps I've got to check out as well. And we'll see how those are like. But I mean, for the performance check, it seemed basically to be functioning properly. It just had that reading error, which means it probably needs recalibrating. But that could be due to bad capacitors. It's possible. So, anyway, I'm going to go through and check these and I'll come back once I've done that. So I've checked the capacitors and so far so good. It all tested okay so far. Here's the phone I've taken out. And you can see it is disintegrating and it is starting to turn to dust. So basically got there just in time. And it's actually what they used is a bit of double sided tape. That's what I used to hold it in. Time for this new foam. Right, that's the new foam installed. You can see there. And in that side. So that's good as new again, at least for the 
I don't know, maybe 10 years or so until that foam degrades. Who knows how long it's going to last? It's better than what it was there. Well, I've got my own checked every capacitor in it, and everything is measuring really well. So I'm happy with all the craps. I'm not actually going to bother recapping it at all. It just looks really good. I mean, inside looks absolutely mint. Like it's just left a factory. It's beautiful inside. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to reinstall the covers, a couple of them anyway. And then I'll go through the calibration procedure, I think, and just make sure it's calibrated properly. Well, there you go. It's back together again. I've gone through the calibration process, checked it out. It's got a bit of a linearity thing there between about, I think it's about 1.5 kilohertz or so, and about 100 kilohertz around that region and that range. It actually ends up reading a bit higher, probably about 5% higher, maybe 10% higher. But the rest of it's actually looking pretty good as far as responsiveness and linearity and things like that. Yeah, I think it's actually doing okay. I'll clean if I pan up a little bit. I left a couple of stickers on it because a historical one, that one. And... Uh, this one here is just a reference for zeroing, so I'll leave it on there too. But yeah, seems to work alright. So I'm going to put this in my other lab and put it to one side. I'm sure this will work fine next time I go to use it. Check out my other videos down below. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Become a Patreon supporter, help me to buy a piece of test gear like this or other things. So I can do videos about them, We're fixing them up and showing you about bits of gear. That's what I like doing. I like doing videos about test gear. I'm a nerd. Catch you later.